I'm here with my colleague, Professor Yael grushka Kane here at Darden. Thanks again for joining me, Yael. Hey, Alex. Thanks for inviting me. What do you think are the characteristics of a project manager who's, who's going to be successful with Agile? Well, I think a project manager has to be aware of the tension around uh, different parts of the organization that come with the Agile framework. Um, and there could be less tension or more tension depending on the setting, but I think the project manager has to recognize uh, why different parts of the organization are asking for different information. Some, you know, some individuals or some departments may need a deadline. They may need a, a due date or a completion date, or they may need some cost estimates. And those are sometimes hard to uh, derive and come up with in the Agile framework. But maybe understanding why they're looking for that information and helping them get um, some knowledge of, of the plan uh, would be helpful. Uh, project managers are typically expected to know things like uh, time, budget, uh, scope, uh, and when they don't have that input, they don't have that from the team or they can't necessarily commit, that makes an organization feel a little bit uncomfortable. Um, and so the project manager has to realize why individuals are asking for information and try and satisfy that. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Uh, typically, I, I like to say that there's always going to be an area where you can compromise on. If somebody's asking you for the, for the timeline, when the project's going to finish, try and understand why they need that information. It, are they constrained by anything? Are they limited in their time? Or can they actually compromise it, but they're just not thinking about the trade-offs? And so a project manager has to do that translation. It has to help the rest of the organization understand what the development are trying to do and kind of shelter the development from questions that are not necessarily helpful or that they cannot necessarily answer. What about working in, in these small, self, relatively self-contained batches, this kind of lean aspect of pairing with, with Agile? Is that hard for someone with a traditional project management background to sell? Um, I think it is initially, although there's a few things that you have to think about. First, uh, it's not uncommon, or there, it's not that we can't point to other organizations that have been doing something similar for, for a while. Uh, Agile has been, com uh, or lean, I should say, has been common in the industry. Um, pharmaceutical companies utilize flexibility in a different way. And so selling this idea that we work, we make some progress and we reevaluate re uh, can be you know, a mirror to what's going on in pharmaceuticals. This idea that we can bail out at some point or this idea that we will uh, adapt our plan to the information that we learn is acceptable out there. And so they just need to point to other industries and examples in which this gets used and utilized and capitalized on to add more value to the company. Um, another distinction that I think is helpful for a project manager is this notion of process versus project. Uh, traditional project management thinks about projects as a unique set of activities that has a start and a finish. Uh, the more and more we move into an agile framework with um, self-organizing, constant fixed teams that work on constant continuous delivery and small iterations, we're moving towards a world of process. And the measures are a process measure, and the way that we think about things has to be done like we consider a process, like, like we consider manufacturing cars in, in, on, the, on the manufacturing plant. It's an ongoing, continuous process. And so if a project manager understands that that's how a software team is going to be working, they can move away from some of the more traditional project lingo into process lingo, and then support the organization in understanding uh, how it's going and how it's progressing. What do you think is, is advisable versus not advisable, productive versus not productive in thinking about Agile as a product management methodology versus something else? Well, again, I think that it's, it's this notion that we can get more feedback and that the products and that the pro process will ultimately lead to, to superior um, customer interaction. Um, so I think it's productive to recognize that that's one of the key motivations here. Uh, whether or not we're thinking about a critical path or whether or not we're thinking about small iterations or, or sprint-like work, uh, we really want to develop something that is useful and is used by the end client and that is then going to lead the company to be successful. And so it's productive to keep that um, on the top of your mind. I'm sure that you've talked about um, uh, the manifesto and the agile principles that, uh, that inspired the movement or inspired much of the, the practices out there today. And I think that keeping that in mind and constantly reflecting on the motivation is very helpful here. Sometimes we lose track. We're so busy fixated on trying to finish a project and complete it on time for some reason or within budget. And again, those may not necessarily be the goals, uh, but we just get sidetracked and, and lost. 
And so we need to go back to the fundamentals and remember the motivation with working in this new approach. In terms of fundamentals, what do you think are the other challenges for a modern organization that a firm that's trying to approach innovation in a systematic way? Uh, well, Agile is uh, definitely inspiring. Uh, the enthusiasm and the happiness of teams and the happiness of clients um, is definitely uh, noted. And so other organizations, more uh, traditional construction or banking industries um, are have a desire to move in that direction. It's not always easy to, to see how some of these principles can move or translate across industries. Um, so I think that one of the challenges is how do you take some of the principles or how do you take some of the inspiration and apply it to your domain? Uh, one area that I think, or one industry that I think can really capitalize on this, and I'm seeing some science, is for instance services. Um, consultants and lawyers and, and uh, some organizations that have more of a service orientation can actually start thinking more in the mindset of, of Agile and working with smaller iteration or quicker iterations and with more uh, close proximity to the client to get feedback sooner. Um, and so I see that they're starting to adapt uh, some new practices. Uh, but in general, when you work with hardware or if you're working with the physical world, it could be sometimes hard to apply some of the concepts that Agile um, is trying to encourage. 